Greetings, prisoners of gravity. This is Commander Rick. Here in space, I'm 22,000 miles away from the nearest library. And all the book clubs say space residents add $89 million to cover launching and handling. So I realize I'll never see a new hardcover or softcover. But with hard drives and software, now there are books on computer. After all, novels are adapted to the silver screen. Why not the computer screen? It started with desktop publishing, books typeset on a computer screen, which begged the question, why bother printing them? So now there's cyber books on floppy disks and up to a quarter of a million pages on one CD. Take a look. Okay, uh, here we go, the Gibson Library. Uh, Neuromancer, that's what we want. The award-winning science fiction novel by Vancouver's William Gibson. Uh, okay, while this is loading, Nancy, run the opening. Anti-Semitism in Eastern Europe has voted the English-only sign. Mm, 40,000 tons of oil with PCBs blew up the ozone layer today. Standing by for solid rocket booster separation. Here we go. Okay, William Gibson, Neuromancer. Ah, okay, the contents of Neuromancer are copyrighted. Blah, 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 and you may use your copy, blah, 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 blah. Ah, table of contents. There we go, let's start with part one here. Point and click, whoop, hello. You can also add margin notes to this and even change the font size on the lettering. And there's, I'm told there's electronic paper clips in here somewhere. Hello, whoop, what the heck's that? Okay, here we go, chapter one. The sky above the port was the... Oh, that's too small, I can't read that. There we go, there we go. The sky above the port was the color of television ton. To, to television to, to hello, and there we go, tuned. Tuned, tuned, hello, back again to a dead channel. Tuned to, oh, it's not like I'm using, case I can't read this, oh, I give up. I don't know, I, I sort of miss the crack of the spine as you open the book. I don't miss the crack of my spine as I lift a 900-page hardcover. Still, more and more writers are exploring this new high-tech way of getting their words across, and naturally leading the way are science fiction authors. Yesterday, I called up Douglas Adams, whose work, like William Gibson's, has been translated into electronic text by the company that introduced the computer disc book in 1989. I've been talking with people about the idea of electronic books, but your Hitchhiker's Guide is now a cyber book as well as a paperback. How far have we gotten with this technology in the real world? This is just about sort of starting at the moment. I mean, uh, the Voyager company in Santa Monica has put out now, I'm glad to say actually mine was one of the, the very, uh, Hitchhiker was one of the very, very first ones they did. Hitchhiker and Alice in Wonderland and uh, um, Jurassic Park, uh, Michael Crichton, put out in, in, read, in, in, in a form that actually mimics the book. Very, very simple, very, very simple and straightforward. And it's for the Apple Macintosh PowerBook series. Um, and it's, it's actually because of the quality of the, um, the screen and the display and the lightness of the thing, it is actually perfectly feasible and perfectly comfortable to read the book in that way. Now, it's not actually particularly great for sort of reading books on airplanes because the battery doesn't last very long. So that's a problem. If the battery life problem was solved, then when I'm traveling a lot, as I tend to do, I mean, the idea of having, you know, the 10 or 20 books that are currently sort of top of your reading list, just taking up a few megabytes on your computer rather than a few kilograms, you know, in your bag is a terrific idea. Um, but when people talk about, oh, well, the computer's going to supplant the book and the book will disappear, right. um, uh, you know, it's evolution. People misunderstand what evolution is. The, fa so the fact that something new evolves does not necessarily mean, because it, when it evolves from something, it doesn't mean to say the something from which it's evolved disappears. It depends on whether the thing it's evolved from is still useful, has some particular function. I mean, some of the, look at an animal like 
the shark. I mean, the shark is one of the oldest animals on this planet in terms of how long it's been in its current shape. You know, all sorts of other animals have gone through one transmutation after another, after another, after another. The shark is a fantastically successful, simple, brutal eating machine. And it works fantastically well at what it does. And whatever else is going on, it survives simply because it's good at what it does. Words are the fundamental means by which we experience each other, the way that we express um, our love, our hate, our grief, our anger, our political views, our um, religion. And the best way that somebody who has no uh, physical contact with another person, can communicate with that person. The most elegant, the most controlled, the most persuasive way is to set it down. Um, right. There are some wonderful words set down in constitutions and in poems mm -hmm. and in novels uh, that have no visual equivalent. And I know we're obsessed with, with being, you know, visually literate. You know, we're preoccupied with the 30 second, 250 cut um, MTV video. But there is, and I see it because I've been on tour for four weeks now and I've been meeting thousands of readers um, at signings and conventions. There's a, a great body of young people who say, I want the word. There are ways you can touch my heart with the word that you cannot touch it with images. Michael, you're a novelist, but you've also worked with audio and visual storytelling in film and comics. So I wanted to ask you if the plain old book is becoming obsolete. It'll be obsolete when people stop reading them. Simple. I don't think it ever will be. I think there'll always be people who want to read books. It might become a specialized skill, but there'll always be people who want to do it. That's just as people who like to read Latin and Greek. I don't mean that, that it, you know, it could, it'll probably go that way if, if, if electronic media, you know, go the way they're going. And I think they're becoming increasingly flexible and increasingly able to do what a novelist want, would, might want to do with them. I mean, still, the novel is still the best form in my view, it is still a, a, a medium that, 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 is, that is vital, right. constantly vital. I mean, you can see it. There's still good novelists, there's still lots of readers, it's still, you know, you're still getting a good buzz off it. But at the same time, the whole video thing's going on, um, VR's going on, I mean, there's, there's all that stuff. And all of that is still in a very expensive stage, I mean, rather than a crude stage. I mean, the, the thinking and technology exists to make very sophisticated VR, but it would cost, you know, $10 million for five minutes <laughs> in the right. arcade, if that's right. the way you were going to do it. <laughs> so, uh, so eventually, I think we'll probably get the, the two running together, just cheerfully. Well, Douglas, even when we talk about a traditional book, we're talking about everything from Moby Dick to the Royal Family pop-up book. Is there an area where electronics is most likely to replace paper? Reference books. Um, if, if you've got research to do, if you want to find out about a subject, then being able to search in the way the computer allows you to do for the things you're interested in, you know, follow through lines of research. Um, uh, I mean, all of that uh, is absolutely tailor-made for computing, and it would, it would work better than a reference book. I mean, when you spend a lot of time working on a computer and you're reading a book, and you suddenly think, oh, no, he referred to this or um, you know, a few pages earlier, where was it? And there's a bit of your mind that instantly wants to go into sort of, um, you know, pull down the menu for find. And you're saying, oh, no, 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 this is, this is, this is a hardwired book. <laughs> you can't do that. You've actually got to go sort of flipping through and try and find it. Right. But if you're publishing in a computer medium, uh, CD-ROM or whatever, right. you could put all the background material, all the research material, um, into, on, onto the CD-ROM as well. So you read your book on it, and, um, and a, a, any footnote that previously would refer you to something in the sort of philosophical transactions of the, uh, the transactions of the Philosophical Society of Harvard or whatever, and you know is actually a, a, an ocean away from you. Uh, it isn't. It's right there. It's right there.
you are now in the outer solar system, 10 billion kilometers from Earth. 